Condensed Matter Physics Imagine a world where everything you touch, taste, and see is constantly in flux, changing form and state. Welcome to the fascinating world of matter, where solid becomes liquid, liquid becomes gas, and everything in between. But what drives this behavior? What causes matter to act the way it does? Get ready to uncover the secrets behind the amazing transformations of matter as we explore the behavior of matter in its various states. Hello once again, science lovers, and welcome to EQ Science, your one-stop channel for all things related to the fascinating world of science, engineering, and technology. So if you're new to this channel, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss any of our videos. Today, we are delving into the mind-blowing world of condensed matter and its behavior in various states. Matter Matter simply refers to anything that has a mass and takes up space. It is the physical substance that makes up the physical universe and includes everything from the tiniest subatomic particles to the largest structures in the universe. Matter can exist in various forms, such as solids, liquids, gases, and plasma. It can also be transformed from one form to another through processes like melting, freezing, evaporation, and condensation. Condensed matter. Condensed matter refers to matter that is in a condensed state, meaning it has a definite volume and shape. This is in contrast to gaseous or plasma states, where the matter does not have a definite shape. In physics, condensed matter is studied under the field of condensed matter physics, which is concerned with the physical properties and behavior of materials in the solid and liquid states. These materials can be composed of a single substance or a combination of different substances, and their properties can be influenced by factors such as temperature, pressure, and magnetic fields. The study of condensed matter physics is important because it helps us understand the properties and behavior of the materials that make up our everyday world, including solids, liquids, and polymers. It also provides the foundation for many technologies, including electronics, energy storage, and nanotechnology. Before we delve in proper, let's look at the various states of matter to further understand their nature. Solid. In a solid, the constituent particles that is atoms, molecules, or ions are tightly and compactly packed together and have a fixed shape and volume. The particles in a solid are in a state of low energy and vibrate about their fixed positions, but do not have enough energy to move around each other or escape the solid structure. Solids can have a range of physical properties, including hardness, brittleness, elasticity, and conductivity, depending on the arrangement and bonding of their constituent particles. Examples of solids include metals, ceramics, and most rocks and minerals. Liquid. In the liquid state of matter, particles are closely packed together, but can move and flow past one another, taking the shape of their container. Liquids have a definite volume, but not a definite shape, and they can be poured and poured back. The intermolecular forces between the particles are weaker than in a solid, but still strong enough to keep the particles in close proximity to one another. Examples of common liquids include water, oil, and alcohol. In the gaseous state, the particles of a substance have high kinetic energy and move randomly in all directions, with no fixed shape or volume. Gases can be compressed or expanded, and they tend to fill the entire volume of the container they are in, unless contained by a force or external pressure. Some common examples of gases include air, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and helium. Solids as a condensed matter. Solids are a type of condensed matter that exist in a state where the constituent particles, such as atoms or molecules, are closely packed together in a fixed pattern or arrangement. Unlike liquids, which is also a type of condensed matter, solids have a fixed shape and volume and are relatively resistant to deformation. There are many types of solids, including metals, ceramics, polymers, and semiconductors each with its own unique properties and applications. In general, solids can be classified into two categories, 
based on the type of bonding between the constituent particles. Covalent solids and non-covalent solids. Covalent solids are held together by strong covalent bonds between the constituent atoms or molecules. These bonds are typically very strong and directional, and as a result, covalent solids tend to be very hard and have high melting points. A diamond is an example of a covalent solid and is known for its hardness and high thermal conductivity. Non-covalent solids, on the other hand, are held together by weaker forces, such as van der Waals forces, hydrogen bonds, or electrostatic interactions. Non-covalent solids tend to have lower melting points and be more malleable than covalent solids. Examples of non-covalent solids include metals, ceramics, and polymers. Metals are solids that are made up of metallic atoms, which are held together by metallic bonding. Metallic bonding is a type of non-covalent bonding, where the valence electronics of the atoms are free to move throughout the solid. This makes metals good conductors of electricity and heat. Metals also tend to be shiny, malleable, and ductile, making them useful for a wide range of applications, from building materials to electronics. Ceramics are solids that are made up of non-metallic atoms, such as oxygen or silicon, that are held together by ionic or covalent bonding. Ceramics tend to be hard, brittle, and have high melting points, and are often used in applications that require high strength and resistance to wear and corrosion. Polymers are solids that are made up of long chains of molecules, or polymers, that are held together by weak, non-covalent bonding. Polymers tend to be lightweight, flexible, and have low melting points, making them useful in a wide range of applications. Semiconductors are solids that have electrical conductivity between that of a metal and an insulator. Semiconductors are used in electronics, such as computer chips, and can be either covalent or non-covalent solids. In summary, solids are a type of condensed matter that exist in a fixed shape and volume and are relatively resistant to deformation. Understanding the properties of solids is important for developing new materials and technologies, and for advancing our understanding of the world around us. Liquids as a condensed matter. Liquids are one of the three common states of matter, along with solids and gases. They are considered a condensed matter because their particles are packed closely together, as opposed to gases, which have more space between their particles. In this way, liquids are similar to solids, but their particles are not held in a fixed rigid arrangement like those of a solid. Instead, they are free to move around and take on the shape of their container. One of the defining characteristics of a liquid is its ability to flow. Unlike a solid, which has a fixed shape, a liquid could take on the shape of its container, and it will flow to any available space. This is because the particles in a liquid are able to move past each other, giving the liquid its fluid-like behavior. Another important characteristic of liquids is their density. Because the particles in a liquid are packed closely together, liquids are generally denser than gases, but less dense than solids. The density of a liquid can be affected by a number of factors, including temperature, pressure, and the presence of other substances in the liquid. Liquids also have unique thermal properties. They are able to conduct heat, but not as well as solids. This is because the particles in a liquid are able to move around, which can disrupt the transfer of heat energy. However, liquids are still better conductors of heat than gases, because the particles in a liquid are closer together. In addition to their thermal properties, liquids also have unique electrical properties. They are able to conduct electricity to some extent, but this ability can vary widely depending on the specific liquid in question. Some liquids are excellent conductors of electricity, while others are poor conductors or even insulators. Liquids also have surface tension, which is the force that holds the surface of a liquid together. This is why drops of liquid form spherical shapes, and why liquid can form a meniscus when it comes into contact with a solid surface. The surface tension of a liquid is affected by a number of factors, including the nature of the liquid's molecules and the presence of other substances in the liquid. Overall, liquids are a fascinating and important class of condensed matter.
They exhibit a wide range of unique properties and behaviors that make them important in a variety of scientific fields, including chemistry, physics, and material science. The goal of condensed matter physics is to understand the physical properties of materials at a fundamental level, including the behavior of electrons, phonons, and other particles. Condensed matter physics has many practical applications, including the development of new materials with specific properties, the design of electronic devices and circuits, and the study of biological systems. It is a broad field that encompasses many disciplines, including material science, solid-state physics, soft matter physics, and biophysics, among others. Thank you for joining us on this fascinating journey into the world of condensed matter physics. We hope you found this video both informative and entertaining. So keep exploring and stay curious. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments section. We always love to hear from our viewers. Thanks again for watching. Please remember to subscribe and turn on notifications, and I'll see you in the next video.